Uh, Bob Weigel Sound Doctor in here in sight of a Thomas Moog preset synthesizer based organ here. It's outside. <laughs> There's the synthesizer board. This is a version that has a bunch of CA3080s. Check, check. Okay. Hey, uh, I gotta insert a little correction here. Uh, there, I was talking to somebody who is quite an expert. This woman uh, had worked on quite a few of these organs and um, the uh, Moog synth part. There actually are three at least versions it seems and I have two schematics and this one looked like the closest one because it has the CA3080 uh, units on the board here as maybe you can see one right there with eight pins. I can't point to it. You can see it in the middle, middle dead center of the screen. Okay. Anyway, I saw those were all in the right place, and until you got over to this side of the board that has the VCF, it all looked the same, but it changes drastically over here. Let me see here. There they are. There you go. I see 19 and 20. Okay, you saw those. Those are CA3080s. Um, and in the schematic, it shows CA3080s on this particular schematic. So that's why I thought that was how it was on that organ. And then I later discovered that over there, IC19 and 20 are actually CA3046s, which are transistor arrays. And it does have... Okay, anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program here. I just wanted to note that correction that this is yet another version and this is the one they used in the Thomas organ the uh, uh, Monticello 372 has the transistor arrays for the filter for the v <coughs> low pass filter it has the CA 3080s in the uh, band pass filter and um, the filter transistors were used uh, they only used a three level uh, ladder Rung instead of five, like a Moog filter typically has, but same general idea of a ladder filter. And it's got a series uh, network with a bandpass filter there, and both of them are modulated when you move the emphasis control or the, or the uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, contour control. And the color control is an enveloping amount. The emphasis of the resonance, which I think only affects the bandpass part in the design, as far as I can see. So, uh, another correction, please. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the contour control is the, um, to be clear, there is the envelope uh, control, and it only affects, as you'll see later, certain patches. It's like the um, art preset synth, they kind of followed the model of making the um, preset dominant as to whether they thought a vibrato should exist on a particular type of instrument, they just turn the vibrato off, it doesn't work anymore, to make it so that you can emulate the instrument more faithfully in their way of looking at it, rather than giving you the flexibility of a synthesis of being able to control the vibrato, <laughs> and so on. And likewise, the contour control does virtually nothing on quite a few, and I think it's that way by intent. I, I haven't studied into it to see if there's something wrong, but I assume not, because it does work on some of the controls. So you get some enveloping, um, you get a slower rise in the filter or whatever uh, for some, and you turn it to the right, and you get a very, it's kind of counterintuitive, you turn it to the right, and you get a more plucky, uh, sharp attack. So it's like the time is inverted on the thing. But um, anyway, uh, there's um, a uh, emphasis is the resonance amount, and it's also backwards. <laughs> it gets less as you turn it up. And uh, I don't know if those were all wired backwards or what. Somebody let me know if your organ's that way too. Maybe mine's just wired backwards. And um, then the uh, uh, color is the actual... Uh, uh, filter opening, the voltage control filter amount, and anyway, both the the contour and the uh, color affect the the um, 
both filters and while the emphasis just affects the band pass I think to clarify there okay okay now first of all we've got a pitch here that's oh see initially when I hit it it was remembering some previous it wasn't tracking right to it it's got a nice octave there but if I Isn't that curious? And it'll do that on any note here. See, it gradually will sag down to where it's supposed to be. So there is a leak across. It's not. And actually, if you test, if you test the key voltages themselves, they're all okay. Okay, it's happening after that. It's happening in the sample and hold after the CA3080 that uh, is the first stage there of the sample and hold circuit. And I'll be switched or there was a switch contact uh, that was hanging on one of the bars so I, I think it's good now. <laughs> Notice I'm on the trem mute. I said color, I think, but it was the filter contour that... Now it's working. I haven't figured the emphasis out. It kind of is reverse emphasis. So it makes more of a wow sound on the left than the right. Maybe it's wired backwards, I don't know. The lunar. I hear a tick. Must be a lunar tick. Anyway, uh, couldn't help but work that in, of course. So we got the color, emphasis. And it contours the release on that one. So little effect on the pizzicato. It is doing something there. Don't hear anything on the banjo. Or the guitar. Oh yeah, there's a... I turn the filter down so maybe it's there on the banjo too. I don't hear it. Yeah, a little bit of uh, subtle overtone there, though the color does nothing. Emphasis does a little. I get nothing on the cello. Maybe a subtle effect on the emphasis, I can't tell for sure. Definitely some there. Not much on the contour there, but the color definitely. There. Yeah, sharp, chomp, chomp, and wah, wah. Okay, so there, clarinet definitely. Nice, nice glide. It's a, it's a nice, smooth synth. It doesn't have any digital quirks, it's all analog, and uh, and there are a lot of things you could do to it. Uh, uh, lady was noting, you know, you can easily put a daughter board on and add, regardless of what version you have, you could upgrade the filter to a 24 dB and uh, make it a lot more interesting on the low pass part. And uh, you could put your own, uh, it's got these little, you know, cards in here that have all the presets here dozen preset cards and you could actually pull one of those and pull the resistors, put digital pots in and create a uh, programmable card that stores memory uh, of different sounds you want. So let's see here, oboe, finisher. Oh yeah, oboe's nice. Subtle emphasis.
subtle contour of any. does have an effect on that. A little bit subtle, but depending on where you set it, it'll be more or less. So anyway, that gives us a, kind of an overview of what to expect when you see one of these. They are uh, really a pretty nice sound in Oregon overall. It's just... <laughs> magic on the accompaniment and it's got the Leslie um, you can combine there and uh, yeah nice Leslie speaker good little organ if you got the place to put it I wish I had a place to put it but I'm gonna have to find somebody that really wants it probably <laughs> Bob let's uh, capture what it sounds like when you put on the got all the uh, octaves pushed in so it's given a tuba kind of and then we can uh, put up the mod depth for the rate it's doing the um, up down stud just the vibrato square wave um, modulation section, you know, like a good polka, yeah, or uh, something, or rock, what does that say, well that's soul, smudge, smudge soul, soul smudger, be a good name for a band, the soul smudgers, that's a real positive, anyway, <laughs> The rumba and uh, bossa nova. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, kind of the run of the features there. You can do octave shifters and vibrato and glide and sustainer to give it a. Let's see, where is this? When does the sustain do something? Probably not on a clarinet, probably on a cello. There we go. Yeah, same kind of thing. Some of the features it's turned off and they don't do anything, which is a strange choice. <laughs> they gave priority the preset over what the user wants. <laughs> That's a white cloud raisin over there. Could have some rain coming again. Oh boy. But clear for now. It's been raining all the time here. Yeah. Yeah, off in the distance you see the Bridger Mountains there. Yeah, green year.